Hello, this is How Could It Be, and today we are going to be tumbling. If you like this video, please like, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Alright, let's get right into this. Reblog if you love her cosplay. She has such a good job. Love that cosplay. This area is under constant for ADO surveillance. Hmm. Frick, it sure is. <laughs> First night as a vampire warlord, I turned my I five most loyal men into vampires as well, but they don't know what that means, and they go out during the day, so now I have none of my five most loyal men. Second night as a vampire warlord, I turned my six to seven tent, uh, six to se tent most loyal men into vampires, but I give them a crash course so they don't die stupidly like the last ones. <laughs> Third night as a vampire warlord, we prepare for... It's a battle, but forget we're allergic to Christianity, so we have to reschedule the battle because we all got sore throats trying to sing ba Agro Ozika. Fourth night, as a vampire warlord, we change our attack plan and also commissioned some more edgy armor because the normal ones reflect too much light. Fifth night, as a vampire warlord, we finally go to battle and we win only because the enemy mistook us on robots for our attack and got rabies. Sixth night as a vampire warlord, we celebrate our victory with a blood feast, but it turns out Sigismund gets a stomachache when the victim isn't specifically a red-haired maid, and he makes the whole party go to shit. Seventh night as a vampire warlord, I find out Sigismund wasn't a vampire and was actually just sick when he tried to drink blood with the rest of us. So I get angry, and impale him. Eighth night as a vampire warlord. Sigismund is still alive because none of his vowel organs got stabbed. Up through. And I started feeling kind of bad for him, but I can't show it or I lose all my authority. So I ask my seven most loyal men to kill him. Ninth night as a vampire warlord. We camp further into the enemy's country, but it's raining. And I actually... Really kind of like the ambiance, but my horse breaks a leg in the mud, so I turn into a vampire horse. Tenth night as a vampire warlord. A vampire horse started by eating other horses, but wasn't turning them into more vampire horses. So now we have no horses, and I have to stop and loot a village, but their horses kind of suck. Eleventh night as a vampire warlord. We start moving again with our new shade horses, but that I carefully turn into vampire horses. But they're still not so good, and it's honestly getting on everyone's nerves. Twelfth night as a vampire warlord. Things get a little gay. Beautiful. I mean, if this isn't if this just isn't how um, being a vampire or goes, I don't know what is. Anyway, I can hear Darwin evolving down my chimney now. Bottom, top. Um, no, I'm pretty sure those are both switches. How do you guys feel about the fact that these two characters exist in the same universe? Death and Shrek. I don't know, horny? Wrong answer. Crap, man. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve. I swear, yesterday was June 2010. As is tradition in Tumblr culture, the locals unearthed the corpse of a long deceased figure and drag it across the streets merrily, laughing at what is preserved with the person's words. This custom, seen as morbid in other cultures, is instead done gleefully and with an unmatched enthusiasm. The haters will use my words against me. Little did they know, I'm always speaking facts.
Has everyone ever had sex before? No, says Sex Haver. The woke mob has made Santa gay. Mrs. Claus has been replaced with a five foot eight twink named Tony Tinsel. <laughs> Episode four: A New Hope. The woke mob has made Santa gay. The uh, Mrs. Claus has been replaced with a five foot eight twink named Tony Tw Tinsel. I cannot say words apparently. We have a heist movie where a guy steals a cat. Last night, I dreamt I was watching a movie called The Heist. In this movie, who, a guy who looked a lot like Mrs. Dad was this secret agent who was tasked with stealing this one cat and smuggling it from England to France across the Channel or Tunnel. At the start of the movie, this guy breaks into, down the wall of his target's house at night by punching it and it gets into a radical cool fight scene with the owner, who was named Kyle and looked a lot like that guy from... The Alex former child mean. After defeating Kyle, Mrs. Dad, I don't remember what the guy's actual name was in my dream, takes a cat and leaves. Next thing in, in is him calling the bosses and explaining that the next part of his plan is to take the channel or tunnel to France. But the tunnel recently got flooded. Mrs. Dad says, no problem. The scene then cuts to the Mrs. Dad driving an extremely large van underwater through the flooded tunnel like a submarine. Even though there's water in the van as well, both he and the cat seem to be able to breathe underwater. Then a gag happens where the current underwater keeps floating back and forth. The cat's unaffected by it, but Mrs. Dad keeps getting knocked in the back and front of the van. And like that rock and a hard place gag from the Simpsons movie. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine this one with Mrs. Dad and Seth Homer, the rock being the back of the van and the hard place being the front of the van and all this underwater water cat just sits there unaffected. The next thing we're starting from the perspective of Kyle's brother who was being interviewed by a local news crew about the event. He said that the worst part of the event was that now he had to cancel his trip to go to the local restaurant with his dad because they have to go find the cat. Kyle's brother, 25. Worst part of this event is that I had to cancel my plan to go to the local restaurant with my dad now. The next scene was that Dad, Mrs. Dad had arrived in Paris with a cat but gets ambushed by Kyle's brother. They were to fight but that's when I woke up. What the heck? It's Christmas Eve and look who's on Tumblr. All of us. Jesus also spent a bar spent Christmas in a barn full full of animals. True. <sighs> Can't believe it, I have to read three pictures. And then a picture about the Santa anime. Oh god, why are they getting longer and longer? Tumblr, please calm down. Alright.
I wish I could sexualize her, but Miyazaki has questionable beliefs that almost align with Japanese nationalism. First of all, I don't know the context, but you can sexualize any character regardless of the original creator's beliefs. In fact, it's best to do it against the creator's beliefs if you think they're a bad person. Like, for instance, make a, 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 the, a, a girl in, in Harry Potter trans because screwed with JKR. We need to liberate our children from nationalism, Miyazaki said. A nationalistic view would suggest the problems in the world comes from its multi ethnicity. It creates a possibility for a country we love to turn into something negative for the world as a whole. This is a lesson we learned from the past war, which we cannot forget. Baffled. I mean, the guy made a film about how awesome the guy who created the Zero Fighter was and how Japan should take pride in that, despite the fighter being used as a tool of Japanese imperialism. I'm not saying he's a nationalist, but like it's kind of obvious he still has stuff he needs to work on. The entire point of the movie, like its whole message, was how the guy who created the Zero Fighter was a misguided artist who ended up causing more harm than good. His entire story follows him repeatedly ignoring signs of poverty and war and death and oppression to follow his dream of designing airplanes. The Wind Rises is not about how awesome this guy was, it's about how selfish and complicated and complicit he was in a war he benefited from. Despite his goodness, there's already a scene where his best friend calls is out. Four countries want airplanes, and they he has a lot to design them. It's ironic. The movie ends with the guy watching a zero fire, the thing he's been working on for the entire film, succeed. Everyone's cheering, but he's lost looking across the, junk the countryside of, Jap of Japan because he's just realized he's lost everything. His wife, his country, his passion. It's not a tragedy. I mean, it's not a victory. It's a tragedy. The next scene is a bombing of Hiroshima as he walks amongst a graveyard of warplanes. It's legacy. He watches his zero fighters fly away and suddenly says, uh, not a single one returned. Also, Japanese nationalists famously hated this movie. Japanese animator under fire to film tribute to Warplane. Miyazaki criticized by Jap uh, uh, pan nationalists. Japanese nationalists attack animation met answer his new film. This is literally a guy who gave us a quote better a pig than a fascist. Pork rest also. Saving the Thread is one of my favorite examples proving that no matter what good intentions and belief a person, creator most often holds, there will always, always, always be idiots that completely misinterpret them and fold 180 degrees and jump to the worst complete conclusions about their character ignoring all the facts that redeem this person. I mean, look at this. Some people are ridiculously confident to judge a very anti-nationalistic guy as a nationalist all because they've missed the undertones of his creation and did not do any research on him. Never or let someone's idiocy become your or anyone else's problem. Now we have Santa. Christmas facts! Fancy Santa uh, figurines are not artistic license, but rather representations of Santa Claus is rarely used power up form. Picture or er, Santa Super Santa Level 2 Transformation. Is this a form you use in the Krampus arc? No, Super Santa Level 2 wasn't in Introduced until the King Grin and Ark. He mostly relied on the holiday spirit technique when fighting Krampus. Oh, I see. The holiday spirit technique was later retired due to the toll it took on his body, though it makes a brief reappearance during the, his battle with the Two Fairy in the 1997 NOAV.
I was blown away by the manga-only cosmic Santa form he attained during the final battle with Jack Frost. <laughs> Thinking of tap into the Christmas wishes of all the world's children to power up his silver, a jolly, happy soul rod attack really made me tear up. I've always wondered whether his cosmic form is really all white, or if that's just because the manga is black and white. Sure, there's a cover of Volume 17 that shows it as white, but it also shows Mrs. Claus's ceremony or Christmas Eve gown as pure white when we know that's not true. And the elves get white variation of their uniform on that cover too, so I don't think we can count the cover as strictly canon. I keep hoping we get an OVA remake of the Jack Frost arc that actually follows the manga so we can see cosmic form in action. Maybe if the fighting game is still as well, on show, oh sorry, there's still an audience for a classic manga? Damn, that's loud. Anyway. I know the story of the nativity story is that the supposed son of God, and Jeffrey Jesus, how you fucking want, of course, was born to a couple of poor, exhausted peasants in a stable for the inn, and his first bed was a feeding trough for animals. That would nowadays be like a poor couple where their mother gives birth in a parking garage behind the motel because they can't find a better place, and nobody else will take them in. It's a pretty great setting, and the idea that is that God was reborn in some of the rock bottom lowest circumstances. The only thing majestic was all the angels and shit, and of course motherly love. It, I get that a lot out of the art portraying Madonna and Child as fabulously wealthy Europeans and said Robinson Golden Light was meant to glorify a glot god plus whichever nobility was sponsoring the artist. Well of course it's generally beautiful art, it's always struck up me as horribly missing the point, which is that the supposed son of God started in incredibly humble circumstances, among the kind of people that everyone else looks down on. Massacre de a Innocence by Leon uh, uh, Agnette, 1824. Although the Feast of the Holy Innocence is in a couple days' time, this painting is so very irrelevant in that it portrays Mary as how she really was. A scared refugee mom, so fearful that her son was going to be one of the innocents killed by King Herod. <coughs> My new favorite modern interpretation of this work, Josie Y. Maya by Everett Patterson. Oh my goodness. I have to look at this like five times to register all the labels of symbolism going into the is a piece by Harrison. The hoodie as a veil. Oh, I see. Weissman cigarettes. Each of them is haloed by an advertisement sticker. Oh, I didn't even see that. Oh, yeah. Huh. No vacancy sign on the hotel. Dove sticker over Amaya's head. Dove sticker? Oh, I see it. Barely. Neon sign with the star symbol over Amaya's head. Oh, yeah, I think I see that. Yeah, right there. The crowd over the Dave City Motel sign. New manga. The sign behind Jose his elbow likely says Herod. The wee little plant growing through the cracks of their feet. It's like a New Testament I spy. I love it. <laughs> new favorite interpretation of the nativity. Huh. Figure out Jose's feet as an advert for a shepherd and watches Mega as hoodie says Nazareth High School. The sign above Jose's head proclaims 
Good news! This is incredible and lovely. Why are on the car in Operate Pony in 7S? Today I learned that rats become more emotionally resilient when they are taught how to drive a small vehicle. Alfie, how dare you leave out this photo? My goodness, it's so cute. Bad thing happens to me. Remember the time when I drove around in a little car? I can do this. And there's your daily motivation. Just remember, you drove around in a little car. You can do anything, because you learn how to drive. And if you didn't, you learned how to add 2 plus 2 is 4. So you can do anything. Anyway, that was r slash Tumblr. If you like this, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!